So the question I get asked all the time is, can you trade intraday supply and demand zones? Meaning, can you trade how to trade demand zones and supply zones on the hourly, on the 15 minute, on the 30 minute, whatever time frame? And what traders tend to typically do is they tend to uh, go zoom down into a lower time frame chart and then they will start to draw demand zones from around there. Let me just uh, do this, All right? They start to try to pick which zone is going to be the uh, the zone that prices are going to turn, which really is futile. Nobody knows which zone prices are going to turn at. Yeah, this is how you know 99.99% of YouTube traders look at intraday supply and demand zone. I'm going to show you another way, and it's really understanding the bigger picture. Right, and the supply and demand zone equation. So the question you have to ask is why is there more likely to be demand at this level? Yeah, then supply more demand orders because it's run and Forex is, is, is run on, on, on the amount of orders, right? More demand orders than supply orders, then you should have prices go up. If there's more supply than demand orders, then prices should continue to go down, right? So rather than looking at it as single zones, you want to look at this whole area, yeah. And understand what's going on here now trading is a zero-sum game meaning for someone to win someone else has to lose when you lose your money is transferred from the loser to the winner to the broker right and when you win your broker is taking the other side of your trade and they lose that's basically how it goes so the reason why i say that is because we need to understand our opponent yeah when we're trading we always need to understand where our opponent is and i'm trading against you you watching this i'm trading against you yeah and the way that i trade against you is understanding your mistakes and what you typically do yeah your, your strategies and i understand exactly how you trade and i trade against you because i'm trying to take money from you and the reason why i do that is because nine about 90 percent 80 percent of traders uh, are not profitable right that's the statistics so i need to trade against you so i know what you do and trading against you and this is how to do that so there's only really three uh, major disciplines when it comes to uh, trading, right? You've got breakout trading discipline, right? You've got the retracement trading discipline, and you've got the level trading discipline, yeah? You might have many different strategies. These might all be in combination with um, stochastics, Bollinger Bands, pivot points, etc. But if you've got an obvious level of support, or resistance yeah lots of every single trader is going to be looking at that and looking for confluences like for example fibonacci etc right so at this point in time yeah looking back and this is not hindsight bias by the way i just want to say this is not hindsight bias because i can show you in our discord group i had sent this out on the 30th of april yeah 30th of april and this at, at uh, 11 34 and this was what was uh, was marked out on the chart to the members in the discord group as what we know as a capture pain relief demand zone yeah so it wasn't done in this isn't done in hindsight this is done in um you know in real time but breaking down this trade and as to the reasons why this is a demand zone and a capture zone is because when you get an obvious level right when you get an obvious level and let me just go back a little bit you get an obvious level of support or resistance in this case support traders yeah especially these breakout traders yeah are getting in on the breakout because it's an obvious level right expecting what to happen price to continue to follow through and nobody knows how far prices are going to follow through or if they really if they will but you know if they do what typically happens is you know you get retracement traders come in as well you get a bit of a breakout a bit of a pullback up into broken support should turn to what resistance and traders when they press what sell meaning that they want to get short on this now what i'm looking for is for that typical setup yeah which again 99.99 percent of youtube traders trade i'm looking for that to fail on them yeah because once they commit yeah once they commit their uh their capital yeah they're going to be caught in their positions breakout traders are already in Retracement traders now start to do what? Get in, yeah? The price action is what gets them in, yeah? And I also know something about traders who trade these types of setups, is that they're not disciplined. In fact, it's not, the, it's not their own fault, but they suffer from something called loss aversion, meaning that losses feel worse than uh, 
um, then then uh, pleasure feels good, and it's an actual bias. And what that is allows me to understand about you know you guys who are watching this is the fact that <clears throat> you who do suffer from the loss loss aversion bias will not want to accept a loss if prices come against you. So what you tend to do is move and remove your stop losses, right? As prices potentially start to go against you. Yeah, there's even strategies out there, and um, uh, uh, there's even teachings out there that that tell you that you should not trade with a stop loss. Believe it or not, for those of you who uh, use stop losses, look, I can show you evidence right here. You know, um, not to, not using stop losses, how to trade without using a stop loss. So, once you uh, um, you know you see something like this start to happen, if prices go to the downside, brilliant, excellent, that's good for them. They make money, you know, and uh, that's the that's their opportunity. But the opportunity that I'm looking for is for when prices do something different. And this is when prices do something different. The unexpected happens. Yeah. So as prices continue going higher, yeah, these guys who have removed and removed their stop losses and who've committed to the downside by pressing sell, they're going through what? Pain through their unrealized. Uh, looking at their unrealized loss on their broker. This is pain. This is the pain phase, the capture pain phase of the uh, the process. And at the same time, this is creating what? Demand. This whole area here is demand. Yeah. All along here, demand. No matter the time frame, whether it's an hourly, whether it's a 30 minute, whether it's a 15 minute, there is lots of traders looking to get short in and around these areas here. Yeah. So what happens is, is when and if if prices ever come back here, yeah, and these traders are in a lot of pain, what's the uh, what's the motivation for these traders who have been caught in their positions to do? They want to get out for at least a small uh, loss or their original loss or at least a break even trade, right? Because if you're if you bet 1% or 2% or even 5% or 10% on your of your capital getting short on this level thinking that this was a sure thing and now you find yourself down 10 15 20 even 50% on this one trade you're going to be motivated and traders are motivated to at least exit their trade for their original loss because that's the next best trade in the book a winning trade then a break even trade then a small loss and then a massive loss is the worst trade you can possibly have so as if prices ever come back down here anyone who's caught in their positions are gonna have to exit their trade right because they've gone through pain they want a bit of pain relief a bit of aspirin this is they're gonna be their aspirin yeah if prices if prices do come back some traders end up blowing their accounts if prices never come back yeah blow their account that's it it's over and done right people you know traders blow their account every day now I'm just sitting here waiting for prices to come back. Exactly what was identified on the 30th of April. It was obvious for this, when this setup started to occur, that the uh, this was a decent demand zone. So then why should there be, going back to the original question, why should there be more demand than supply at this area? What's that got to do with these guys here? Well, I'm gonna explain it to you. So these guys, if you went short, you have to do what to exit? You have to go long to the opposite transaction. So if you sell, you have to buy to exit. So buying is, buy order is what? Demand, yeah, it's demand, yeah. So when the uh, you get a bit of pain relief or if they get a bit of pain relief, they're gonna be getting out at a small loss right here. Also what you do have is you have Demand traders like myself who understand that instinctively this is a demand zone on a lower time frame, yeah, getting involved here. So more traders who get involved in this area here, more demand orders, more buy orders, right? And then what you have is traders who trade, you know, trading up here, who are shorting from up here, where are they potentially taking profit? Probably at the lows of what would be a range, yeah? So this is the low, this is the high, and they're taking profit somewhere around here. If they're taking profit, if they sold, they have to do what? To exit, to take profit, they have to do the opposite, which is demand, they have to buy. 
yeah so there's loads of demand orders all the way around here all around this zone here yeah so no matter what time frame you're trading yeah whether it's a two hour or one hour uh, a 30 minute it does not matter because zones that most traders would have been uh, uh, plotting on their uh, on their charts whether it's a 30 minute zone a 15 minute zone all this encompasses this whole zone and then what we're doing is looking for buy trades to the upside because there should be more demand from a supply and demand order equation perspective than supply who buys at lows why is there going to be more supply here now the only reason why there would be more supply here is because Fundamentally or sentiment-wise, the Canadian dollar was gonna was basically getting stronger. Yeah, it could be for any particular fundamental reason. It could be some good news. It could be negative sentiment for the dollar, etc. Right? Because we know as as traders that technicals um, uh, are no match for the fundamentals. The fundamentals and risk sentiment and liquidity is really what drives prices. It's not any kind of technical analysis. But from a technical analysis perspective, we understand from a from a from a, um, a really deep level why there should be more demand here, and then we use fundamental analysis as confluence right with our trade. So we decided that we want to get long here, yeah, as a trade setup. You know, days before, and uh, this is basically what happens. So. Instead of looking at intraday little demand zones or supply zones, some some silly rally based rally method, right? And trying to pick the absolute level where it's going to turn. Look at the demand zone as a whole. Yeah, look at it as a whole. Understand that you're going to have edges. You've got a psychological edge over your opponent. Yeah, and you've also got and you understand the supply and demand equation in this area from other traders when prices come back to that area yeah so not every trade works out 100% of course no, it doesn't but this is the kind of level you need to be on if you really want to even stand a chance yeah in the forex market and again this is not financial advice um, most of you who are watching this are probably going to end up blowing your account and uh, losing all of your money it's not glamorous but unfortunately, it's the sad reality. So if you understand intraday time frames and how to draw demand zones, this is exactly how to draw intraday demand zones. Anyways, guys, I uh, hope you found that uh, useful and uh, take care. Until the next video. So if what I'm saying resonates with you, why not check out trading180.com? There is a selection process to trade my supply and demand zone forex strategy. I'm only looking to work with uh, individuals with the right mindset, you know, who are hard working as well. So um, check that out and access really for less than one pound a day. This Some of the strategies in here are not for beginners. So if you don't know what supply and demand is, please check out all of my supply and demand videos. I have hundreds of videos on YouTube, so you can check that out first. Um, guys, take care and until the next video, have a good one.